Welcome to a new video on my channel and this is going to be another Node-RED content where I was um, trying out with some you know dynamic pages on Dashboard 2.0 and what I wanted to do is let's say I have a set of sensors or um, a set of devices that uh, supply a similar amount or a similar type of data and I want to build a UI where this is visualized in the dashboard but obviously if I have 10 different devices I don't want to build you know, 10 different uh, pages with exactly the same, uh, you know, layout and fields and everything just to show the 10 different uh, uh, devices. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to create something dynamic like, like this one. <clears throat> and of course, normally you would be able to do that as uh, let's say you have a drop down or some sort of selection on the screen. So you select the device that you want to look and then, you know, that screen is going to show the data for that specific device. But uh, in this particular scenario, um, the, the requirement was that uh, this page would be shown in a kiosk that is, you know, pre-configured to load the URL. So I wanted to have a solution which doesn't require a user interaction in order to set up the place. So what I have done is you can see that I have two windows here and they are both running the same, um, you know, page on the dashboard, on dashboard 2.0, which is called the dynamic. And, but I am able to supply some parameters in the request parameters. Uh, so you can see dynamic question param equals one and param equals two. And then it shows that on this page, it shows that the parameter is one, on this page, the parameter is two, and they are both displaying random numbers. And these random numbers are, uh, you know, specific to this page. So you can see that this is showing numbers in, uh, between 10 and 20, and this one shows between 20 and 30. So I am able to create a Node-RED flow where I can send data to the same dashboard and that data only specifically gets displayed based on the you know the query parameters in the URL. So again this would be a good place to have one page which uh, is you know designed to display one specific data but that uh, data what is getting displayed can be configured based on a URL parameters. So in my case that would be like you know multiple sensors and I can set up this page or this URL that you can see here so either this one or that one uh, to show up in a kiosk or some other type of display where you know it is pre-configured to start a browser in let's say kiosk mode and automatically start loading a web page and then start displaying it. I do understand that this is some sort of like niche scenario that uh, I started to work on, but I managed to, you know, do some uh, sort of tricks. Uh, well, not really tricks, but just to learn a couple of new things, uh, how I can use Dashboard 2.0 and some of the controls, which I haven't used uh, uh, just yet. And the way I managed to do all this is to use the UI event nodes in Dashboard 2.0, which, uh, to be honest, I haven't used uh, before. I used the UI control, but not the UI uh, event because that's the one where I can get the full you know uh, URL query of the dashboard uh, which is you know being displayed so I was able to use that in order to tell what is the query parameters and then I can configure my flow <clears throat> and of course the way I am creating this sort of dynamic data which uh, you know specifically either shown on uh, only shown to the respective browser sessions is to use the client ID which is very similar how I <clears throat> use information um, to you know display user specific uh, things for example only show a pop-up message where you know that pop-up message is requested by a user action or you know initiated by a user action or um, previously well i think a couple of months ago i had a video how i'm trying to use uh, build some sort of user control so that is also using the uh, not session id socket id in order to distinguish the different sessions or users that are using dashboard 2.0 okay so let's see how this code looks like and actually it's only this much so it's not really complicated and uh, so what is happening here is in this top part of the flow i have created a ui event so that is uh, getting fired every time there is a UI event on the dashboard in 2.0. And I am specifically looking for a UI event, which is called the page view. And that page view UI event, which uh, is here, uh, as you can see, it has a topic of page view. 
it's coming from this debug node and this debug node is set uh, to set the complete message object and okay it has a payload uh, and it has the client id and the socket id so this is what identifies this uh, particular uh, dashboard to window so it's oh sorry that it's this one or that one and also you can see that in the payload and query there is the query parameter so param equals two so that's the um that's the parameter which is getting um, extracted from here so i can have one or multiple and they will show up in this uh, uh in this query object here under payload so that's that's nice this is what i could use all these events come in from this ui events uh, node and i have created a very simple um flow because sorry going back so this ui event is configured for a ui so obviously that would get uh, triggered whenever you are accessing any pages or when you are displaying any pages from the uh, from dashboard so what i have done is i put a filter here for the page that i am specifically interested in so if the topic is page view or dollar page view and if the page the message.payload.page.name so you can see that under the message.payload.page it shows all the information on of the page which is actually getting displayed so all i all i wanted is i wanted to get the name of the page which obviously you configure whenever you um you know you create your group and then the group is within your page so that's the name uh, that is the, what i'm looking for so if it's this page name then it also looks at if uh, if i have a query parameter which is called the param so if you are trying to load this page without a query parameter then you get a message that the missing parameter in the url so i can oops query param equals and i can put like three as well so now i'm getting you know random numbers between 20 30 and 40. Uh, and if the parameter is supplied uh, then what i do is i create a flow variable which is called dynamic and that basically just captures uh, this parameter and the socket id related to that parameter so you can see that the the last socket id for param1 was this parameter2 was this and then parameter3 is now that and that's basically how the uh, the you know the update flow will know which um, value to send to which socket id um, and of course the output of this is the parameter so that number which is getting displayed here and then i have a completely separate flow which uh, you know just generates random numbers so obviously this would be your sensor details or sensor values so what i've done here is i get this dynamic variable which contains all my um, you know parameters and my session ids socket ids i generate them uh, so i generate a set of random numbers so as you can see from one to five only for testing purposes but the real thing is that um, i send out messages where let's say the topic is data the payload is a, a number and i also include in this message an underscore client object and then i say that the socket id is the dynamic i so basically if if it's um, you know if it's random number one then uh, or parameter one the socket id is this one or socket I, uh, for two is this and the socket id for this is uh, is that so every message that i send out contains an underscore client and the socket id as well because and i just send out the message so what this flow does and it it's sort of like let's assume that i have five sensor values and for each of these sensor values it would generate a message um, but in that message it also includes the the client and the socket id so if i go back to the debug and if i enable this debug you see that it just basically spits out three messages at the same time and if i convert this to complete message let's just stop it so now you can see that for every message it includes the client and it has a socket id 
And obviously that client and that socket ID corresponds to the socket ID of, uh, you know, this uh, browser window, basically. So you can see that they are still getting the numbers updated. And if I change this to param1, then I start to get the, uh, you know, the data for param1. And this is possible because of this setting here, which is obviously important. So if you go into, you know, dashboard 2.0, and assuming that you are in one of the latest version where this client data tab was uh, made available, and then by default, it says include client data. So that basically, uh, whenever you send a message from a dashboard, that will include this underscore client and the socket ID. And then you also configure here, which are the, um, the UI element, which accept the client data. So at the moment, I have the UI text and the UI notification configured and also UI control. But what is important here is the UI text because I'm using UI text here. And then what it does, it, it will only display the message or it will only update the, the value on the dashboard uh, where the socket ID of that dashboard window matches the socket ID of the, um, uh, you know, the client socket ID, which is coming in the message object. So this is why I have two windows that are exactly the same and they are basically the same, you know, parameter and value, um, you know, fields, which is only, you know, one single field or basically one single field, one single field each in the Node-RED flow, but they are displaying completely separate pieces of information because on one window, the socket ID only matches with one set of messages that are coming in. And here the socket ID matches with another set of messages that are coming in and everything else is just gets ignored. So you can just send in the messages to these uh, UI elements and then just make sure that the socket ID matches and then everything else which has a separate socket ID would just get ignored. The only other thing which uh, is important to remember if that uh, if the message does not contain any socket ID, it will still get uh, displayed. So whenever you are trying to use this functionality, make sure that you always include the, you know, this client and the socket ID in the message, uh, because that's the only way to basically distinguish that information to only show up in the respective uh, window. And that of course works with, you know, a third one as well. So I have this guy and I create, I can create another one. Uh, where can you see that? So let's say two. So now I have three windows and they are all showing a separate pieces of information. So that's really cool. And uh, it's working. I mean, it's, it's more like a proof of concept at the moment, but it's working very nice. The only thing which I haven't really implemented, which I probably should is this, um, uh, this dynamic variable gets updated. So if I refresh, so let's see, this is how it looks like. And if I refresh this page, which refreshes the socket ID as well, then uh, the, I think, was it number two? Okay. It's time for lunch. Remember to wash your hands. Thank you, Google. So if uh, you can see that the socket ID for number two got updated and um, yeah, that's it. So the only thing which I haven't implemented, if I close this window, then if you would use the UI control node, not the UI event, then you would get a disconnect message. So I can technically just remove these. Um, so the, uh, the system doesn't get, doesn't keep sending messages to basically parameter two, which doesn't exist or, you know, the, uh, the window is not open anymore. Um, so I can reduce the load, but, um, I probably do that once uh, it goes to a full solution. But as I said, it's more like a proof of concept at this, at this point. So I think that's interesting use of the, you know, the client data and the socket IND and how you create something where you can have uh, one single dashboard in, you know, two instances showing different set of information and having this all done by, you know, controlling the UI parameters, sorry, uh, the URI parameters in the, uh, in the dashboard URL. So that was an interesting concept. I wasn't sure if I would, I was able to do that. Actually, I asked some uh, questions in the, um, in the forum because uh, 
I haven't realized that this information is available in the UI event, but not in the UI control. But now I know, and well, hopefully you know as well, and you would be able to use this information as well if you have something similar that you need to implement in the Ondel dashboard. As usual, this piece of the flow is going to be available in the video description. As I said, the only important, the only additional thing to note is that you make sure that you you have this checked, which I think is checked by default. And also the, the UI text is checked to accept client data. And if you are planning to use any other UI controls, which is not the UI text, like a dropdown or a, well, probably not a button because it doesn't display anything, but you know, if you have a, if you want to use a slider or a numeric or um, like a switch, then make sure that you do include these as well to accept client data. And of course, that also means that it, it this inform or these settings is for the whole node red. So it will not have an impact on this particular page, but your entire node red dashboard as well. But as I said, if your um, message does not include the underscore client, it will get displayed all the time. So if you are experiencing that by enabling this function, some of your uh, flows are not working uh, or some of your dashboards are not working or not showing the updated information. Maybe the only thing you need to do is you need to remove the underscore client from your messages and they will not have the client data. So they would be accepted by default. So I think that will be all for today. Um, as usual, links in the video description. And yeah, thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video.